You know, it's been a hot minute since we've talked together in front of our dog water camera, our liquid ass looking camera. But you know what? We're back. Both of us are back. And to all the new subscribers, this is going to make you hard. It's going to make both of us hard. It's already got my nips hard. But I'm not going to put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you. So this is the Avriel R32 Special Deck Profile with a spicy tech of an Ultra Ball. I would have said that, and now everybody and their fucking mama's playing Demise of the Land and Mystic Mind. So let's dive on in to the deck that I've always been talking about for the past few videos. Brandon Eldritch with some spicy Mystic Mind tech. Let's dive on into it, shall we? sure that you Eldelich smash the ever living crap out of that subscribe button and the like and the bell and all that good stuff so we can get to 800 and eventually 1,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, especially for all of you who have recently subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for the support. It really does mean a lot to me. I really do want to get to that goal. End goal, I should say, of 1,000 subscribers. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I typically don't play a lot of control decks. At least I haven't in a while. The last real control deck, I would say, that I've played and had success with, you could argue was Trick Stars when they first came out uh, in 2017, near the end of the Zodiac Tier 0 format. Before that, I played Chain Beat, aka Garden Beat, where you use Black Garden, Wind Up Rabbit, Evil Swarm Thunderbird, and just controlled the board from there, which was really fun. Um, but something that actually even the Trickstar deck, not just the Garden Beat, Chain Beat deck, and this deck all have in common is you need to have very good technical play. And if you ever want to practice your technical play, this is a very good deck to do that, even just straight Eldritch. I decided to go with 60 cards because it was funny because at the time, which I feel like a lot of people have based their builds off of this video, but it's from, uh, I believe his name is Tatsimi, and then the guy that topped, his YouTube name is like La Simi or something. I'm going to have a link to the original deck profile down in the description uh, if I can find it. Um, but this guy, La Simi, topped in Europe. It was like a nationals or like a regional qualifier or something like that. 228 people, and he topped with Branded Eldritch. So this is actually his build that I decided to go with. But what's cool about 60-card Branded Eldritch, or as I was going to call it before everyone started playing 3 Demise Land, 3 Mystic Mine, and a Branded Eldritch came in top 32 at YCS Hartford, was that I was actually going to call the deck the Avril R32 Special because it's got Eldritch with a Branded Engine, plus it's got Mystic Mine. So I feel like it encompasses me as a player and my YouTube channel really well. Like, I'm a meta player, but I also like to troll with Mystic Mine. And as much as I want to play heavy combo decks, I'm more of a mid-range player. And that's kind of what this deck is, is control slash mid-range. So if you feel like that this is something that you feel would adapt to your play style well, or even if you just want to practice your technical play and following certain ways to play a deck um, and uh, being able to be very adaptable to situations, this is a very good deck to play. So as I said, there's many different ways you can build it. You can have a Dogmatica engine. I'm not running a Dogmatica engine. You can play that if you want. I'm actually going to locals this upcoming weekend uh, because I'm filming this on a Friday to play test this IRL, not just online, and see how I do. So with all that out of the way, let's just go ahead and dive into the deck I've been talking about in like several videos now. I just didn't want to show my list because I wanted to go to Locals first, but now I'm just like, fuck it, everybody's playing Triple Demise and Triple Mystic Mind now. So, uh, starting off, you're playing three copies of Eldritch the Golden Lord. You would think that a, this would brick, and really, it doesn't. Um, yeah, you're going to end up with some hands that are, as we like to say on the channel, booty booty butt cheeks, compared to other hands, but at the same time, opening up multiple Golden Lords normally in pure Eldritch is bad, but with this, it's fine because it's just another way for you to get rid of cards on the board, and you want to have three because you're running Black Awakening, Scarlet Sanguines, all that stuff, so the more targets you have, the better. And that's it for the Eldritch Monsters, and then we're just going to be playing two copies of Alubar for our Branded Engine, along with two copies of Fallen of Albaz, and then we're also playing one Necro World Banshee and one Doom King Baldroach, along with our one copy of Zombie World to go along with our Zombie Engine. Now, nobody else is <laughs> playing these three cards. They may be playing Necro World Banshee with Zombie World, but none of them are playing Baldurroach. And Baldurroach, one can make the argument, can be a little bit of a brick. However, when you have an ability 
to just go Scarlet Sanguine, get out Balder Roach, and if you've got Zombie World, then you end up with a negate on your field is so, so good. And the fact that you can constantly recur it out in defense as long as there's a field spell in the field spell zone is really, really good. And that's why I'm still sticking with this original build from Europe because of the fact that people are going to be playing their builds however they want to play them. They're not necessarily going to go with my build, and I'm not seeing any other branded Eldritch builds that are 60 cards playing this exact build. So I feel like I still have a good chance to pants some people with this deck, which is originally why I went with this deck, because no one else was playing this, um, to surprise people with what I'm playing. I will say, too, that this deck has fantastic matchups against the meta. You play against something rogue like Ramaju, your asshole is getting destroyed. Like, that's just how it is with this deck. You have a terrible fucking rogue matchup. Your Mystic Mind matchup, you should win. Flunderies is a buy majority of the time. Branded is easy, cheesy, lemon squeezy. Uh, <laughs> and Sword Soul is not that bad either. Um, and I also have a tech in the extra deck for the Sword Soul matchup, but it really hasn't come up yet. But I have it just in case because it's actually pretty solid and no one else is playing it. So that is my reasoning for that. And also just Super Poly with Zombie World on the board to make Draco Necro is really fucking good. So continuing on with the spells, we're playing three copies of Branded Fusion because it's Branded Fusion. Three copies of Super Poly, which... <laughs> Super poly is super poly. It's it's good. Like what can I say? That it's it's just good. It just works. <laughs> uh, then we're playing two copies of Black Awakening. You can make one of these um, Elder Elixir of White Destiny if you want to. Um, I'm opting to just play these, but White Destiny pretty much does the same thing. It's just a quick play spell instead of the normal spell. Hindsight being 2020, I probably should have bought a White Destiny one Black Awakening instead of two, but it is what it is. Um, adjust this for how you want. They pretty much just do the same thing. Most of the time with Black Awakening, you're just going to send it off with Golden Lord in order to bring this out, or in order to get it engraved and then banish it like a Conk or Golden Land forever, what have you. So, but it's here in case you uh, need to set it if you don't have like any more uh, Scarlet Sanguines, or if you do have a Scarlet Sanguine set, then you could just set this uh, instead. And then we're playing three copies of Cursed Elder Land because it's good, and then three copies of our cheese and three more copies of Archies. <laughs> um, this, before it topped the YCS, this engine threw so many people off. And when you think about it, especially in a deck like this, if you open like a bit of a brick, you can just set like four in the back row and set Fallen of Albaz. The moment the opponent special summons, you flip up Demise of the Land and activate your Mystic Mind, and now the opponent either has to run over your set monster, which then they'll see as an Albaz, and then they'll really be confused, um, or they just have to leave both players on the field with one monster up and then the Mystic Mind pops and then you can flip up the Albaz and, you know, make plays from there. So I love this engine of Demise and Mystic Mind. It just, it throw so many people off. It still throws some players off online whenever I test with this because they don't know what I'm playing. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really juicy. There's not much more I can say about it. We're playing three copies of Extra because you really don't need Prosperity in this deck. Um, that's actually the beauty of this deck is that you you don't need Prosperity, and it's it's really great. We're also playing one copy of Theater of the Branded um, for our branded engine, for lack of a better explanation. Uh, you can also send this off with our one-of copy of Set Rotation. So I don't know why no other 60-card branded Elder Lich control decks are playing set rotation because you've got the three Mystic Minds as a target. You've got Theater of the Branded. You've got Zombie World. Uh, you have these targets that you can effectively use set rotation with, and it helps your Flunder matchup. It helps against any matchup that wants to run a field spell. You know, they try and activate, like, if it's straight Mystic Mind Burn, they activate a Mystic Mind. You chain the set rotation before they end their turn. Give them Theater of the Branded. Give yourself Zombie World, and then there you go. You're off to the races. Against Flunder, they try and activate Maps Effect. You chain set rotation. Give them a theater of the branded. Give yourself zombie world. I love set rotation. It is so damn good. And again, no one sees it coming because no one is playing set rotation. And then we're also playing one copy of Call by the Grave, one Foolish Barrel, and one Terraforming to search out our field spells. The Foolish Barrel can really dump Golden Lord, Banshee, Bald Roach, whatever it is that you need in the grave. And then for the traps, because there's a shit ton of them, we're playing three copies of Scarlet Sanguine. Three copies of Conquistador, because it's Conk. 
th uh, yeah, three copies of Wakero. Typically, you just dump this off of the Cursed Eldoland, or you'll ditch it off Golden Lord in hand. Um, it's a DD Crow if you have Golden Lord on the board. It really doesn't come up all that much. Uh, typically, you just dump it to get yourself to Scarlet Sanguine or Black Awakening. We're playing two copies of Judgment because we're side decking the third. One copy of Golden Land Forever, which is really good to get the setup going first, especially if you have Judgments in the back row as well or Floodgates. And then one copy of Metaverse, rounding off our Negates slash Zombie Engine. And then for the Floodgates, because we're playing a shit ton of them, we're playing three copies of Rivalry of Warlords because it's just good. Three copies of Skill Dwayne. Three copies of Goes and Match. And finally, rounding off the 60 card tower, three copies of TC Boo. What's really fun about side decking for this deck, or with this deck, is that you just take out whatever floodgates you don't need. So in our side deck, we're doing, just to tell you real quick, I mean, it's the same as what's going to be linked in the description of that deck profile, but uh, three Artifact Sanctum, one Lancia, one Scythe, three Lava Golem, three Dimensional Barrier, one Solemn Judgment, and three Evenly Match. Typically, I side deck in the three Evenly and the three Lava, if I know I'm going second. You just take out three Divines of Land and then three copies of whatever floodgates you don't need, and then you're good to go from there. Depending on the matchup, you may also side deck in the Triple Sanctum, the Scythe, and the Lancia, and then you can take out more floodgates, whatever it is that you don't need. Maybe even super poly, depending on the matchup. Also depends too, like whenever you're playing an IRL game, how much, you, how many cards you see the opponent side deck. Like they only side deck two cards, then you really don't need to side deck all that heavily. You can just side deck the generic stuff for going second, like triple lava, triple evenly. Um, obviously, this shit does lose to roll decree. Um, I got hit with that in a Flunder matchup online on EDO Pro earlier, and I'm like, who the fuck is playing roll decree? But I guess more people are going to be playing that shit now. Um, especially in Flunder, but yeah, it's something to keep in mind, um, but regardless, even though I do have a regional coming up June 11th and 19th, I feel very confident in my skill with this deck to play through those things or to even, you know, just play optimally to go against those cards. So for the extra deck, I don't have it in order because I'm constantly shuffling it with extra, but we're playing one copy of Draco Necro. So this is a dragon fusion monster that's 3,000 attack, zero defense that requires two zombies. So you get zombie world up, and my super poly is more live than my love life. <laughs> I love Draco Necro. No one else is playing this card, and it is, it's really good. It, it pants so many people. Uh, we are also playing, it's actually two copies of Mirror Jade. You'll see that soon enough. Triple copies of Albion. Uh, two copies of Lubelion. We are playing two copies of uh, Drago Scapelia. One copy of the Basker Dragon. There's the other Lubelion. There's the other uh, Scapelia. There's the third Lubelion. Excuse me. We're playing three Lubelion, not uh, th two. Uh, two Mirror Jade, as I said. Three Albion. Uh, one Mud Dragon of the Swamp. One Masquerade. And then finally, for our Sword Sold matchup, this is the Great Double Casted Caster. It's irrelevant AF. <laughs> the only thing that you need to know is that it's zero attack, 2600 defense, so it has a fat ass, and it requires two, what is it, normal monsters or tokens? Yeah, two non-effect monsters. So if you're going against Sword Soul, and they hit you with Monk of the Tenyi, and then they get a token on the board, you can just go Super Poly, suck up the Monk of the Tenyi and a token, and then you bring out Double Casted Caster in defense. And it's like, what are they going to do now? They've lost their Monk, they've lost their token, or if they're like a really bad player, and they go like, Mogi, get out a token, and then they don't sink, and then they go long one, get out another token, and then you just super poly off with the two tokens. Um, this really hasn't come up. I think it's only come up like once in testing, um, which honestly doesn't really surprise me. I understand why a lot of people have cut it, and I would like to play Alba Linatus, but I, Alba Linatus really hasn't come up. I've been thinking about playing like Starving Venom or something. But that just doesn't seem to come up as much. Then I thought about playing the Violent Chimera Fusion for Salad. Um, but even with Violent Chimera, the Salad matchup is still 50-50 because again, against Rogue decks, you're just going to have a really shitty time. Um, so you can substitute this for something else if you want. I like it as a tech. No one's going to be seeing it coming compared to like Starving Venom or even Violent Chimera, things like that. I feel like more players would be prepared for that, whereas they're going to be shitting their pants when they see double cast a caster come out, especially if you have skill drain and you've just got a 2600 ass on the board that the opponent can't get around, uh, whether it's because you've got floodgates or stuff like that on the board. So, but guys, that's the deck. I already said what the side deck was. Um, I will try to refine that deck profile and leave it linked in the description. Um, and again, 
you know, let me know what you think about this deck. Uh, it's it honestly, it's a lot of fun, and it really is a great deck to play if you want to get better at Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole because it is a deck that requires a lot of skillful technical play um, that you very much get rewarded for if you play it correctly. Yeah, you're gonna have those hands where you brick like. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. It's just like how I have dog water luck when my dad always opens the fucking feather duster on me whenever I play this deck. Like, it is what it is. So, guys, please, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sub subscribing and supporting the channel, and I will see you in the next video.